Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much on behalf of the Alumni Association for coming out to Football Fridays at the EC. Uh, we have the pleasure every week here at Football Fridays of debuting the What Would You Fight For commercial uh, that will be airing this week at halftime of the Learning Football broadcast on NBC. As most of you know, these commercials really highlight some of the amazing work being done by faculty and students on this campus to really help us live out the university's mission of being a force for good in the world. Um, this week's commercial is really uh, appropriate for what's going on in our country this week. Uh, it's about hurricane uh, response and preparedness. So obviously all of our thoughts are with uh, those affected by Hurricane Florence and we're, we're praying for those people this weekend. Um, we, we are lucky to have with us two professors from Notre Dame who are experts in helping cities uh, recover from hurricanes and prevent further damage and to also be prepared um, and ready when, when hurricanes are, are arriving. So I'm first going to show, I'm gonna step off the stage so we can watch this week's commercial and then I'll invite our uh, featured faculty members this week to come up and we're gonna have a discussion um, about this issue and they'll be taking your questions uh, during the second half of that discussion. So please start thinking of your questions now. All right, let's watch the commercial. If I trace it backwards, I get here, to this place, to this moment. I was 10 years old. Good evening. A killer earthquake hit Mexico City this morning, and they're still counting the dead tonight. The earth shook. Buildings crumbled. People screamed. Thousands more have been injured. The effect was devastating. A city became rubble. I saw chaos. I saw fear. I vowed then that I would become an engineer so I could protect those families. Notre Dame Professor of Engineering and Global Affairs, Tracy Kajuski Correa, has studied the impact of natural disasters around the globe, from earthquakes and tsunamis to hurricanes. So when we travel to these devastated places, as engineers, we're hoping to understand how our math and models truly have performed under real world conditions. But when you get there, you have to have a certain sense of awe at what Mother Nature can do. In that moment when your breath has been taken away, the next thought in your mind is, well, how can we do better? got evacuation routes up here at Notre Dame. We built a platform called NJ Coast that brings all the critical information that first responders and urban planners need to protect their communities into one location. Here in Keensburg, Superstorm Sandy definitely had an impact. 75% of the town had water in it. Definitely a wake up call. New Jersey Coast allows us to see how the storm is gonna have a direct impact on our residents and how to better protect them. I arrived on this planet with a real hunger to fix things. And when we were able to do this NJ Coast project, it was an opportunity for dreams to come true because I could look in the eye of people who were in the middle of something catastrophic and know that we could finally stand there with them rather than just watch from afar. The University of Notre Dame asks, what would you fight for? Fighting to protect our community. We are the Fighting Irish. All right, it is now my pleasure to introduce our uh, two guests for this afternoon. First, uh, you, you saw her featured in the commercial, Tracy Kajuski Correa is the Leo E. and Patty Ruth Lindbeck Collegiate Chair and Associate Professor of the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering and Earth Sciences and concurrent faculty in the new Keough School of Global Affairs. Please welcome Professor uh, Kajuski Correa. And Professor Alex Taflonidis is the Associate Professor and Frank M. Freeman Collegiate Chair in Structural Engineering. Please welcome Professor Taflonidis. Thank you both so much for being here. Uh, Tracy, we, the video gave us a little background into your motivation for why you got into this line of work, but can you tell us a little bit more about what it is exactly you do when a hurricane like Hurricane Florence hits and you get sent in afterwards, what is it that you're doing on the ground? So I think um, the public may not appreciate the fact that the buildings, the bridges, the homes you all live in, they're designed based on a set of building codes and standards that quite frankly, we cannot simulate the effect of a hurricane in a laboratory. The literal only way that we can validate or understand if our designs are really protecting all of you is to go in when nature has hit and verify that and then feed that back to improving building practice. So we're trying to learn from that disaster in order to improve the way we build coastal communities, but also communities affected by earthquakes, tsunamis, and tornadoes. 
you are always quick to point out that you are one of many people on this team that is doing this work responding to these natural disasters. I think it's 70 different researchers from 23 different organizations. How does Notre Dame fit into this puzzle? Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that's quite amazing about being an engineer, many of us, especially civil engineers, became an engineer because we wanted to help. After a disaster, we have an amazing outreach from the engineering community who are willing to volunteer to go on the front lines to check all of your homes and businesses and learn from these disasters. And Notre Dame has had a big role in responding. But what we're doing now is serving as the coordinating node for all of the structural engineering response through the National Science Foundation. So as of this morning, for example, 89 different engineers from around the country have already signed up to go in on the front line for Florence as a volunteer. And now Notre Dame is coordinating them and giving them all the tools to make that knowledge impactful to help FEMA and the federal government respond. Well, thank you for doing that important work. Are, are there students involved in this work? Absolutely. I think one of the beautiful things for our students is these moments when a hurricane hits or Florence hitting right now reminds them of the duty, the obligation, um, the responsibility they carry as engineers to make our lives better and safer. And so what we do for our students is, since we can't often send them into far harm's way with the immediate team, they are a virtual support team. They sit and actually go through all the data feeding in from the teams on the ground, add additional data that they can see from satellite imagery and the things that the guys on the ground cannot see, and get the data set into the hands of officials as quickly as possible. So they're like a virtual support team. And many of the students who helped with Harvey last year lived in New Jersey and had their homes destroyed by Sandy, and now they're coming to help Texas. And now we believe next, North Carolina. They helped Florida, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands. So to know our students are not only seeing the impact on their community, but immediately turning to now what can we do to help the next community? And I think that's beautiful. Well, speaking of New Jersey, uh, Alex, uh, one of the things that was featured in the commercials was a project called NJ Coast. I know something that you were a leader on uh, here at Notre Dame. Can you please explain what exactly NJ Coast is in kind of layman's terms so that I can understand it? And, you know, what, what you do, what data was collected and, and how it's used? Uh, yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll try to answer that question with an example. So okay. imagine uh, that you are an uh, emergency response manager somewhere in New Jersey and you have an imminent uh, hurricane uh, that you know that it's uh, maybe a, a day or two from making landfall. And then you try to plan what that response would be. Uh, NG Coast is a very powerful web platform that, you know, pretty much it can uh, run in uh, your, uh, you know, uh, smartphone uh, that comes and gives you the same power that the managers at FEMA or the, or the Army Corps that they have with their supercomputers available, but you can just simply run it in, in, in your only phone. Um, and that uh, can help you better prepare a uh, run, for example, what if, uh, you know, set scenarios, what's going to happen if the hurricane changes a little bit path or uh, what's going to happen if the bridge, of the, if the dunes bridge, uh, to better, you know, inform what your response should be. Uh, and there is a range of data that we, that we, we used to, to create NG Coast, a lot of their, the other, the regional, you know, data assets uh, about the state. And the other is uh, a lot of runs uh, that actually have been established by using, you know, a software that were co-developed here at the University of Notre Dame and the Army Corps actually developed the runs. But those runs took a lot of computational effort to establish with other proprietary tools that we have here at Notre Dame, we were able to gather that data and make it into something that can run really quickly and, as I said, can even run in your phone, smartphone. Um, is this something that the, the folks in the communities in the Carolinas had access to as, as they prepared for, for Hurricane Florence this week? Uh, the the, the NG Coast was specifically developed for the state of New Jersey. Uh, what they have in the Carolinas, uh, what Renzi, the Renaissance Computing Institute is running for them, is running a single scenario. So because they, they have to use their very powerful supercomputers to run very complex models, but they just run one storm. So what is the most probable track that they think? So in, by comparison, NG Coast allows, allows planners to run multiple scenarios, what's going to happen if the storm changes a little bit, what's going to happen if our dunes breach. Um, the 
foundation is exactly the same sort of computational models, but we, because we had that large available database for New Jersey, we're able to develop something that runs much faster. Tracy, you mentioned earlier that Notre Dame has really become kind of the leader of this effort uh, nationally. You know, Notre Dame is not located in a place that is likely to be hit by a hurricane. What was it about the university, about Notre Dame? How did we, you know, turn into the, the leader in, uh, for the country in, in this field? Yeah, I think it's an interesting combination of two factors. The first is that when you're in California, you tend to focus on earthquakes. If you're in North Carolina, you focus on hurricanes. Being here in Indiana, we created um, a group that focuses on all disasters. We're kind of agnostic about the disasters we can respond to, which made it a hub for like-minded individuals who wanted to come and be able to work on things across disciplines. So Alex was trained in California. He's an earthquake guy by training. He's designing tools to save lives in hurricanes now. That only happens at Notre Dame, where instead of focusing on what affects only your region, we're a national university. We focus on what affects our nation. And particularly the way we do our work, the fact that we go on the front lines when many schools do not, brings out a different spirit in our team, which is why we're kind of at the front line of this. And we're marrying both what it means to go out and collect the data and engage communities. And I think a lot of it is the character of this university, a Catholic university wanting to serve. But then we tie it to this ability to do it for every disaster and every hazard because we don't have a bias toward one because we sit here and on days like today, I'm coordinating response to Florence and I am not without power or internet. So it's good to be outside the zone and be able to do the coordination when they themselves cannot right now. We're gonna open it up to questions for the audience in just one second, but before we do, you know, you mentioned even right before we got on stage, I know you were working coordinating response to Florence. Um, are you also, will you be heading down to the Carolinas uh, soon here? So if we do our job at Notre Dame, it no longer will need to be only Notre Dame and our friends that deploy. We believe that engineers across the country and the world want to help in various ways. So we've taken everything we learned responding last year to all the hurricanes that hit U.S. territory and turned it into a system including a mobile app where engineers around the country and the world can start supporting the effort. So if I do my job well in the next week or so, I will not need to deploy, but I will have a highly capable team mobilized and ready to move in next week to bring the data in quickly where our students can start analyzing it and get it into FEMA's hands within a week. And that's far more scalable than me going, coming back and doing it all alone. So the goal is, um, I think a good university leader writes themselves out of the process and is able to invite and involve more. And I think that's what we hope to be at Notre Dame, the one that lets everyone who can contribute have a chance. All right, well, we're ready, ready to take some questions from the audience. Raise your hand if you have a question. We'll have some folks coming around with microphones. Don't be shy. We've got microphones here on the patio. Who's got a question? Well, I can ask a question. Sure. <laughs> Um, specifically about NJ Coast, so who, who's the end user on the ground in New Jersey that's using this information? And then uh, to a follow-up, if, if New Jersey were to get hit by a hurricane next week, what impact do you think would this have on what would actually happen on the ground? All right, so I'll try to tackle two parts of that question. So um, the first question was, who is this designed for? Um, when we worked on NJ Coast, Alex has this amazing model, and as he said, these models are run by FEMA, the Army Corps, by experts. So our big challenge was, how do you take something only experts know how to do and let an emergency manager who may have no experience or training and not even a fancy computer run that? So we designed the whole system so that you didn't know how to have to know how to operate any fancy software. If you can open Google Maps, you can see where all the hospitals, evacuation routes, all the critical things are, oh, and you can see the storm coming in and where the flooding's gonna hit and Looking where the winds are coming, Aaron. and you yeah, just need to be able to open your web browser. Yeah. And that was a huge shift. So that means the, I'll give you an example, the um, emergency manager who's an ex-Marine, and he knows how to get people out but doesn't know how to run this fancy software, he can pull up his phone and know where the elderly are and how to get them out. And that was the big shift of bringing science and yeah. research, which is usually locked in a beautiful place like Notre Dame, to the hands of people who need it the most. Okay. Um, and so what would their life look like? The way we set up NJ Coast is that as soon as a hurricane becomes active in the Atlantic Basin and the North Basin, it automatically pulls the feed in for the National Hurricane Center and is updating his phone or computer in real time. So when Florence was creeping in, they were like, 
is our dashboard going to light up? I said, no, she hooks south. But they're already using it and anticipating right now in this month of September as we have multiple hurricanes forming, when their dashboard lights up, they know it's go time and they already have a projection of how far that water's coming in before she ever reaches their outer you know, shoreline. And so they're planning their response immediately now rather than waiting for someone to tell them from you know, the Hurricane Center that it's time or FEMA that it's time. Thank you. Other questions? Raise your hand if you have a question. We are actually, um, this is on uh, Facebook Live as well. So if you're home um, for the next home game, you can actually watch this on Friday and submit your questions via Facebook. So know that for, uh, for a future week. And if you ask a question now, you'll be seen around the world on Facebook. So raise your hands. I have one more question. So I think there is a connection between the engineering department and the Keogh School of Global Affairs. So how, how does that play out for you, Tracy? Well, you know, what I would say is though I represent maybe this official connection in terms of being jointly appointed in both schools, um, what I will say is that if you care about the impact of natural disasters and climate change, which are something that we in engineering care deeply about, this is a global issue. And when these events happen, they often strike places that are far more vulnerable than America. They affect places like Haiti, where Alex and I have worked for a long time and care deeply about. And so I think that if we are going to be a premier school of global affairs, we cannot neglect what climate, what natural disasters can do, how they can wipe a city out in a day. We need to be a university that sees how to link those together and make it an important part of our agenda. And so I'm proud to be part of both units to bring the passion and technology from engineering into a stage where we will respond in America, but we will respond globally to use our engineering to improve the lives of the people who are at most risk. And that's what I'm particularly proud about. Well, Tracy and Alex, I know that this is such a busy time for you right now, given what's going on in the Carolinas. We so appreciate you being here with us. We have some gifts for you, some Notre this year's Notre Dame Christmas ornaments from the Alumni Association. But please join me in giving a round of applause for Tracy and Alex for the great work they're doing for so many communities across the country. And thank you so much for being here. At 1.30 in the auditorium, there'll be Chalk Talk with Bill and Bill. You can go in. They break down uh, you know, the, the, the first two games of the season. Look at the plays. They'll preview the Vanderbilt game. So please head into the auditorium in a little bit for Chalk Talk with Bill and Bill. Thanks so much.